Hi folks, David Waring here again with InformTrades.com in today's lesson of the day. In our last lesson, we continued our course on the logistics of stock trading with a look at how to place and execute a limit order. In today's lesson, we're going to continue our discussion on how to place stock trades with a look at how to place a stop order. So let's get started. Thus far, we have learned how to place an order to be executed at the best price available in the market, the market order, and how to place an order that will only be executed if the market trades at the price you specify in the order or better, referred to as the limit order. What about if you would like to place an order to buy a stock at a price that is higher than the current market price, or to sell a stock at a price that is lower than the current market price? If you tried to do this with a limit order, the order would immediately execute at the current market price because in both these situations, the current market price would be better than the price where you place the order. In this situation, you would place what is known as a stop order. A stop order is an order placed to sell a stock above the current market price or to buy a stock below the current market price. Once the market hits your stop price, your platform will activate the stop order, which will be sent to the exchange as a market order to be executed at the best price available in the market at the time. Like using a market order, the advantage of placing a stop order is that you are pretty much guaranteed to be filled on your trade. The disadvantage is that you do not know the price that you will be filled at until after the order is filled by your broker. For traders who prefer price certainty as many do, most platforms also offer what is referred to as a stop limit order. The stop limit order works in a similar manner to the stop order in that it is an order you place to buy a stock at a price that is above the current market price or, or in order to sell a stock at a price that is below the current market price. The difference between the two orders is that a stop limit order turns into a limit order once the stop price is hit, meaning that the trade will only be executed at the price you specify in the order or better. This is in contrast to the straight stop order, which will be executed at the best price available in the market, which can be a worse price than the price at which the stop order was placed. Now that we understand this, Let's log into our Thinkorswim paper trading accounts and place a stop and a stop limit order. If you've not done so already, I encourage you to push the pause button and click the link above this video where you can register for a free Thinkorswim demo account so you can follow along with us as well. Once you've logged into the platform, let's go ahead and pull up a quote for the ETF which tracks the price of the S&P 500 index, the SPY. For this example, let's say that I want to buy if the market trades up 5 points from the current market price. Since I am buying, I would click the ask price to populate the order window, and then I would change the order column which currently reads limit to stop. Once I've done this, a new row of options will appear which will allow me to adjust the price in the price column to five points above the current market price. I want this order to sit on the platform until my price is hit so I'm going to click the blue arrow beside where it says day under the rules column and then select GTC which stands for good tail cancelled in the window that appears. This will keep the order on the platform until I cancel it manually even if I log out of the platform. Once I've done this, I'm going to push the confirm and send button 
and then the send button in the confirmation window that appears. After pushing the send button, you should see the order appear in the order book with the word working in the status window where it will sit until your stop price is hit. The process for placing a stop limit order is exactly the same with the exception of the order column where you would choose stop limit from the drop down instead of stop. That's our lesson for today. In our next lesson, we will look at how to close trades using the market stop and limit orders. So I hope to see you in that lesson. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And good luck with your trading.